Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm Ruri McLennan coming to you from Glasgow, Scotland. Here are the latest headlines from around the world. In the US, diocesan respect life coordinators and the pro-life secretariat of the National Bishops' Conference are exhorting Catholics to voice their opposition to the repeal of the Hyde Amendment, which bans federal Medicaid funding of abortions. Respect Life Coordinator Rachel Hendricks of the Diocese of Trenton said people in parishes should learn about the amendment and its conscience-protecting impact, without which federal tax dollars will contribute to abortions around the country. The amendment prohibits the use of federal tax money for abortion, except in cases of rape, incest, or when the life of the mother is in danger. The amendment has to be renewed every year as part of the Appropriations Bill for the Department of Health and Human Services. The Bishops' Conference wants Catholics to sign the petition, asking congressmen to oppose the repeal of the amendment. Similarly, the US state of Louisiana will observe the anniversary of the legalizing of abortion in the country as the Day of Tears from next year onwards. It was on January the 22nd, 1973, that the US Supreme Court came out with its landmark Roe v. Wade ruling, legalizing medical termination of pregnancy. After Arkansas, Mississippi and Alabama, Louisiana is the fourth state to mourn the death of more than 61 million unborn children who were killed after abortion was legalized. Last week, the Louisiana state legislature passed the Day of Tears resolution and encouraged citizens to lower their flags to half-mast on January the 22nd to mourn unborn children who were killed. Catholics in the US observe the day as National Day of Prayer for the legal protection of unborn children. The timely intervention of a senior Muslim cleric and other officials in Pakistan helped defuse a dispute which could have spiralled into an international diplomatic crisis. Three Christian nurses of the city of Lahore were accused of insulting Islam on social media by their Muslim colleagues. When the nurses faced threats and pressure to convert to Islam, Father James Channon OP, who heads a centre promoting inter-religious harmony, sought the intervention of Zubair Abid, Vice President of a body of Muslim clerics. After listening to both sides, the cleric declared that Sakira Meta Bibi, Jessica Kuram and Teresa Eric were not guilty of blasphemy. A hearing was held thereafter in the presence of Muslim nurses, government officials, church representatives and police, after which both sides reconciled. This incident is the latest in a chain of blasphemy charges against Christian nurses in the country. Catholic faithful in the U.S. state of Connecticut will return to the pews from May the 22nd, as three bishops have decided to revoke the dispensation from the obligation to attend weekend masses. A pastoral letter issued by Bridgeport Bishop Frank Caggiano, Norwich Bishop Michael Cote and Hartford Auxiliary Bishop Juan Miguel Betancor states that the obligation will be reinstated, as there are signs of the pandemic loosening its grip. The bishops say it is important for Catholics to return to the Sunday celebration of Mass in person. The prelates had granted the dispensation on March the 16th of last year, when the COVID-19 pandemic was at its height, and it was extended several times. However, the bishops have exempted COVID patients, caregivers, people suffering from other major ailments, and those with pre-existing conditions from attending Sunday Masses. As Marian shrines around the world have been chosen by the Holy See to lead the Rosary each day of this month as part of the Marathon of Prayer initiated by Pope Francis, the Basilica of the National Shrine of the Immaculate Conception in Washington, D.C. will lead the service on Monday, May the 17th. At 12pm local time that day, Washington Archbishop Cardinal Wilton Gregory will lead the Rosary at the Basilica for the special intention of world leaders and heads of global organisations as they strive to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Catholics have been invited to join the Rosary online and the prayer will be live streamed on the Shrine's website. It will also be attended by 1,000 believers in person while maintaining social distancing. The month-long prayer initiative is being organised by the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of the New Evangelization, seeking an end to the pandemic scourge. Cardinal Oswald Gracias of Bombay Archdiocese, who also chairs the Catholic Bishops' Conference of India, has said that the Church is fully prepared to lend a helping hand to the government's efforts to stem the spread of the COVID-19 pandemic. After meeting officials of Caritas India, the Cardinal said the Church is preparing to help more people across the nation without discrimination of caste or creed. 
Even though the Christian population does not make up a large part of the population of India, the Catholic Church has the upper hand in sectors like health, education and social services. On Sunday, India recorded 403,728 confirmed COVID-19 cases and 4,092 deaths. So far, more than 22 million infections and 240,000 deaths have been reported in the country, where the health system is buckling because of an acute shortage of oxygen cylinders, ventilators and hospital beds. Two Catholic bishops in Britain have expressed concern over the proposed two-tier asylum system and the government plans for stricter border security. In a letter addressed to Home Secretary Priti Patel, Bishop Paul McAleenan, Chair Bishop of the Migrants and Refugees Commission, and Bishop William Nolan, who heads the Scottish Bishops' Commission for Justice and Peace, expressed the Church's concern about the government's new plan for immigration. They said the two-tier system could drive more people into the hands of traffickers. The prelates also called for resettlement targets and proper support for civil society groups, welcoming refugees through community sponsorship. The Ministry of Lay Catechists has been instituted by Pope Francis through an apostolic letter entitled Antiquum Ministerium. The new ministry recognises laymen and women who feel called by virtue of their baptism to cooperate in the work of catechesis. These catechists will carry out evangelization in places where there are no or very few priests to minister to the faithful. In his apostolic letter, Pope Francis traces their ancient origin in the New Testament he also refers to the Second Vatican Council that's recognised the vital role of catechists in the development of the Christian community. It was Pope Paul VI's apostolic letter Evangelii Nunciandi and the 2019 Synod on the Amazon that paved the way for the institutionalisation of catechists in the Church. And those are your latest news headlines. Do join us again tomorrow. In the meantime, you can visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.